Welcome to another video in the series Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Concepts. I would strongly advise you to view the other videos in this series before you go on to this heading or you view this particular uh, heading in case the basics regarding nucleophile, electrophile, fission is not clear to you. Okay. The topic for today is nucleophilic substitution reactions. Substitute when one atom or group replaces another atom or group. Just like you have a teacher coming to your class in place of a teacher who may be busy. So that is what we call as a substitute teacher. Same way it is substitution. An element or group is replaced by another atom or group. For example, we have alkyl halide over here. The halogen atom is replaced by the nucleophile hydroxyl ion. Since the replacement is taking place by a nucleophile, that is why it is called as a nucleophilic substitution reaction. There are two categories of these reactions. We call them as SN1 and SN2 reactions. S in both of these stands for substitution. N for nucleophilic. What does the 1 and 2 stand for? If it's a 1, SN1, that means it's a unimolecular reaction. 2, it means a bimolecular reaction. What are the terms unimolecular and bimolecular? Unimolecular means that is the reaction is dependent on one molecule. In the rate determining step, you have one molecule participating. Whereas bimolecular, in the rate determining slow step, two molecules are involved. That is what we mean by bimolecular. Let us see what we have in SN1 reactions. Now SN1 reactions are usually shown by tertiary compounds. Here we have taken the example of a tertiary alkyl halide. Tertiary stands for three. Primary 1, binary 2, tertiary 3. That means the carbon atom, which has the nucleophile attached to it, is attached to three other carbon atoms. These alkyl groups may be same or they may be different. Just for clarity, I have marked them as R, R double dash and R triple dash. The arrangement of these can be viewed like this. So if you notice over here, I have put four different straws in a tetrahedral manner indicating the tetrahedral arrangement of these uh, groups which are aligned along, around the central carbon atom. Here, the ball is our central carbon atom and these are the four carbon atoms or the groups which are attached to it. Now here the bond angle will not be exactly 109 degrees 28 minutes because there's a halogen atom that we have. But we shall go along uh, uh, assuming that it's a tetrahedral structure. Now, here if you notice, this has to be replaced. This is two-dimensional arrangement or two-dimensional uh, uh, representation. So what we have is the ones which are in the same plane. Now we have these, this is a three-dimensional structure. One coming out of the plane of the paper, the other going inside the plane of the paper. I cannot represent a three-dimensional structure on a paper or a board. So we found a way out. What do we do is we draw solid lines for bonds which are aligned with each other. That means are in one plane. The dotted line represents the group which is inside that is directed away from you. And the solid line for groups which are directed towards you. In this case, let's say it's the blue straw over here. Now, when the nucleophile tries to come and attack it, now this is heavily guarded by these alkyl groups over here, R, R double dash, R triple dash, these are all alkyl groups. They will not allow another nucleophile to come and attack the central carbon atom in order to take place, take the place of the halogen atom. So, first we need to create space for this halogen atom. In order to make space, here the halogen atom leaves the carbon atom. Why will the halogen atom leave the carbon atom is because of the 
reaction conditions the conditions of the reaction this will happen in the presence of an aqueous alkali i am carrying out this reaction in the presence of aqueous sodium hydroxide or aqueous potassium hydroxide so what will happen over here is the halogen atom will have a tendency to leave the central carbon with the result now what will happen is so let us suppose that this atom or group leaves away the other bonds they will align themselves in a manner so that they are maximum distance apart from each other as is the rule in carbon compounds so now they are each at a bond angle of 120 degrees and aligned in one plane next step is now this will be a very unstable species why carbon has a positive charge over here in other words this is a carbocation intermediate an intermediate where carbon is carrying a positive charge it's highly unstable it needs something which is itself carrying a negative charge so a reagent which carries a negative charge is what we call as a nucleophile n for negative n for nucleophile so something which is itself carrying a negative charge which in our case over here for the example that we are taking is the OH negative so we have Na positive plus OH negative we are talking about aqueous sodium hydroxide so the nucleophile present in the reaction mixture is hydroxyl ion now this hydroxyl ion let us suppose we have now we are going to talk about a hydroxyl ion which we will represent by this long straw just to make a differentiation. Now this hydroxyl ion can attack this from any of the ends resulting in two types of arrangements. Again they will align themselves so that they are spread out to the maximum that is there will be tetrahedral arrangement. But one structure since we are saying that it can approach from the front it can also approach from the back so the product will have molecules which will have the same configuration as the original molecule the product will also have molecules having configuration opposite to that of the original molecule in other words we have something which is called as a racemic mixture in other words if it's an optical isomers, it will give us products which has both the D and the L form of the optical isomer. How do we represent it is? We have here, we shall put the straws back in place and we have these kind of structures which will be mirror images of each other but their effect on plain polarized light will be opposite these are what will be called as optical isomers so i have one this product which is the same as the original whereas one which is opposite which is having configuration opposite to that of our original uh, substrate in the rate determining step a rate determining step is always the slowest step in a series of reactions. So here my rate determining step, slow step is the first one. The halogen atom will not easily leave the carbocation. It's like, you know, it is in its comfort zone. It wants to stay there. Otherwise, when it leaves, it carries a negative charge. But the reaction conditions are forcing it to move away. So this will be a slow process because it's very attached to the substrate molecule. In other words, my slow step involves only the substrate, which in this case is an alkyl halide, the tertiary alkyl halide. So the rate is dependent. So in the rate determining step, we have only one molecule, so a unimolecular reaction. Moreover, it has been observed experimentally that the rate of this particular reaction is dependent only on the concentration of the substrate that we have taken. That is why they are called as first order reaction. This type of a mixture where you have product with the same configuration as the substrate and product having opposite configuration to that of the substrate is what we call as a racemic 
mixture. What if the primary alkyl halides were to undergo this type of reaction uh, mechanism? We recall our study regarding carbocations, where we had said that the tertiary carbocations are most stable, followed by secondary, and the least in the series is primary. The primary carbocation will not be so stable. It can't stay with the without the halogen atom. So the primary carbocation will immediately have a tendency or it will not release, it will not allow the halogen atom to go away easily. It's the primary, it's the first. So that is why it is not stabilized by hyperconjugation as is in the case of tertiary. So what we have over here is the primary alkyl halides will not have a tendency to undergo this type of reaction mechanism. Coming to SN2 reactions, substitution, nucleophilic, bimolecular. As we said, they are taking place in primary alkyl com compounds. Now, let us see the mechanism that happens over here. Again, we go back to the structure which we had started off with. So, we have here a tetrahedral arrangement of the atoms here. So again, we are talking about, let's suppose our initial compound is an optical isomer here. Now, here this doesn't have bulky groups attached to it. So what happens over here is, in the presence of the nucleophile, the nucleophile will try and try to fit in somewhere in this molecule. Now, so what it does is, it comes, nudges here and there, here and there. And let us suppose if this is my nucleophile, the yellow straw is my nucleophile, which is already attached. Now, this nucleophile, the incoming nucleophile, can't approach it from the same side as the original nucleophile because both of them have a negative tendency. So this will try and approach it from the opposite side. So if you notice over here, the long blue straw has been connected to the opposite side. Now, this, the other molecules which are attached to it, the other groups with, sorry, which are attached to it, they will align themselves in order to accommodate this nucleophile. Now the leaving nucleophile and the incoming nucleophile are attached to the same carbon atom plus the groups which are already there. So what do we have is one, two, three, four, five groups attached. In other words, carbon is showing a valency of five. Is it possible for carbon to show a valency of five? No, it's overloaded now. It's, there's too much load on it. There's too much atoms or groups attached to it. So it will have a tendency to get rid of something. It can't have the load of two nucleophiles on it. So what happens over here is, if this nucleophile is weak, this has to go. What we are left with again, four atoms attached. Now here I have the nucleophile. We can't have this arrangement. This will try, again the molecules will try to align themselves in a way so that they are maximum distance apart from each other, which in this case, again, gives us a tetrahedral arrangement. Now, if you notice, this configuration is opposite to what we started off with. We started like this, we ended up with this configuration. In other words, our product has configuration which is opposite to our initial substrate. That is why we say the product has configuration, inverted configuration. This particular inversion of configuration is specifically named as Walden inversion, W-A-L-D-E-N. That is Walden inversion. And in many a book, you will find it compared to the turning upside down of an umbrella in strong wind. So if this is our umbrella, we start off with, at the end of this process, what do we have over here is, 
this is our umbrella so many books they many authors they prefer to compare it to the turning inside out of an umbrella in strong wind called as walden inversion slow step will obviously be where the incoming nucleophile tries to come and attach itself to the carbon atom the central carbon atom slow step involves two molecules bimolecular it has been observed experimentally that the rate of this reaction is dependent on the first power of the concentration of the substrate and the first power of the concentration of the nucleophile so 1 plus 1 gives me 2 hence this is a second order reaction compared to sn1 reactions which are found to be primarily first order reactions now what about we've spoken about primary we've spoken about tertiary what about the secondary alkyl compounds what type of reactions do they undergo for secondary it will depend upon the reaction conditions since they are in between they can either undergo sn1 or they undergo sn2 depending upon what type of substrate and what type of nucleophile we are talking about coming to one more aspect why don't tertiary alkyl halides undergo sn2 reactions can you think of a possible reason as to why the tertiary they would prefer sn1 and not sn2 sn2 requires the attack of a nucleophile the attachment of a nucleophile to the central carbon atom so what is going to happen is here in the case of tertiary alkyl halides there are bulky groups over here what we call as steric hindrance so that will not allow the incoming nucleophile to come and attach itself to the central carbon atom hope this makes the concept a bit more clearer again as in previous uh, lessons i would insist that if you want to get a strong hold if you want to understand this topic well first thing please practice each of these reaction mechanisms because yes you are asked to write the mechanism at higher levels you are asked to write the mechanisms of reaction so it is best in your interest to practice writing these reaction mechanism and once you have practiced two or three time in order to gain confidence in this particular topic i would suggest that you teach it to some of your buddy some of your classmate who would need help in this particular topic wish you all the luck